Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to do a single color ice dye in the color Dragon Fruit. And this is going to go into the playlist of Dharma's Dye Swatches, so make sure you check that out. So you want to make sure you smooth all the wrinkles out of your shirt first, and then decide where you want the center of your spiral to be and just give it a little pinch. And as usual, I'm using the microwave splatter guard that I got from Amazon, and I do have a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye, so make sure you check that out. And then I'm using a hemostat. I put the hemostat down on the first click because it does not need to be overly tight. You don't want to tear a hole in your shirt. I give it maybe two or three twists and then pay attention. I'm using my opposite hand to actually create the spiral. I'm making the pleats, I'm going around and around, the hemostat is just there to hold it into place. Once you've gone as far as you can creating your spiral using the microwave splatter guard, you need to unclick your hemostat and hold down the center of it and gently wiggle the hemostat out. Now, for spirals, I like to secure them by using rubber bands. And for this one, I'm going to be using my favorite rubber bands and you can find the link for them down below in the description box. Once I get a few rubber bands on the project, I like to start to tighten down my spiral. The microwave splatter guard makes great spirals, but they're not very tight spirals. And if you need to pick up your spiral and move it around, you need a nice tight spiral. So what I like to do is pull on all of the loose tails and tuck them into the nearest rubber band. And I will go around and around pulling on those loose tails and tucking them in until when you pull on them, you really can't make it move anymore. Then you know you have a nice tight spiral. And this way, if you have to flip it over, add dye on the back side, or you know, move it around from rack to rack or whatever, it's not going to fall apart on you. It takes a little bit of time, um, but if you watch and pay attention, eventually a nice spiral is a, just going to emerge. Well, that looks pretty good. It's the closest thing to a pleated spiral without making a pleated spiral. So the next step is I'm going to mark out my pattern using a washable marker. You know, this is not necessary, but it's something that I like to do. And you also need to create some type of an ice barrier. So I'm using the silicone cake molds for this one. And you guys have seen me make these uh, single color ice dyes for the playlist. Um, a lot. I think we're up to like 30 of them now. Um, so I find that single color ice dyes turn out great and they're actually so beautiful. Um, I have a really new appreciation for white space and tie dye after making these. So I do recommend that you guys make yourself some.
Next, I give my project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and I add the soda ash only to the areas that have the dye, and then I add my ice. And I like to add it to the white areas first. That way, if the ice is gonna bounce around, it's going to knock into the dye versus knocking the dye into the white. I hope that makes sense. And then it's recommended that you batch for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. Now it's time for the rinse out. You wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Now, if you're trying to protect white, which we are in this project, you really, really wanna make sure you get all that soda ash out. If you don't, you do run the risk of the darker color redepositing onto the white. Okay, so once you get it pretty much you know, rinsed out well, I like to take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma. It's usually about two hot water cycles, especially when you're washing multiple things, you wanna make sure you get all that dye out. Then I do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And again, the links are down below in the description box. Makes it easy for you to find. Then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our two line spiral and the color dragon fruit after it's been washed and dried. And I think it's really pretty. Dragon fruit is a really good go-to color if you're looking for a nice hot pink. You know, as far as ice dyeing goes, mm, you know, it's not overly exciting because it doesn't split. Where you see the lighter tones of pink, that's just because it's diffused by all the ice. You know, it's less dye. Um, but there are no color splits, you know, there's no purples or orange, yellow, green, you know, there's nothing coming off of it. Um, so that's good if you're looking for a color that's not going to split and throw a bunch of, you know, wild colors and you're looking for a hot pink, uh, dragon fruit is a really good color. I also use it a lot as a liquid dye because it's just overall a very pleasing color. And then right here is the liquid swatch against the ice dyed swatch. That way you can see the difference. And don't judge my swatch, it's got some blue splattered on it. I use my swatches a lot, they come in very handy. So overall though, what do you guys think of the color dragon fruit? Please leave me some comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.